So I've put together a little presentation about outsider mathematics. It's a field still very much in its infancy, and I haven't really seen any established mathematicians talking about it, so who better than a frankly very unestablished mathematician to give it a whirl? Uh, to start talking about outsider math mathematics, we need to talk about outsider art. Outsider art refers to art, usually the visual arts and literature, made by people who are self-taught or out of the art scene. These artists differ from traditional artists in two ways. One, they do not have the tools that typical artists have. And two, they do not have the goals that typical artists have. They may not know, for example, that when you're drawing something in perspective, you want to have a vanishing point. You know, you want all the lines to converge. Uh, and they also may not know things like, okay, still lives and portraits are things that everyone likes to draw. Um, they'll, they'll be drawing whatever they want to do, whatever, they, whatever desires they have. Techniques they don't have, goals they don't have. This is what makes an outsider artist an outsider artist. Um, this has led to a lot of fascinating, groundbreaking work, even in fields like the visual arts, where many artists are just trying to break the rules and think outside of the box. I could honestly talk about our, like talk for hours about some of the work out there. This is Bottle Village, a series of buildings and shrines made mostly of glass bottles by an outsider artist who went by Grandma Prisby. Her purpose for building these structures was to house precious mementos of her life, and she decided to use hundreds of thousands of colored glass bottles as her building materials. This really hadn't been done before, and for good reason. Uh, 10 years after her death, an earthquake it's severe damage to Bottle Village. And some of you might be thinking, well, that's why you don't make buildings out of glass bottles. But the point of outsider art is that someone had to be crazy enough to make buildings out of glass bottles. You know, a, a traditional artist would have seen the flaws in a second, would have, would have been like, there's no way I'm making this building out of glass bottles. That, that's just not going to work. But because someone did it first, lots of traditional artists now are actually making bottle structures. They were inspired by Bottle Village, and you know, with the help of the inspiration of um, someone out, someone outside the, the the field, and then the knowledge of someone inside the field, they were able to make something you know that would last. All right, I could talk about this all day, but let's go to mathematics. As usual, mathematics as an artistic pursuit doesn't get nearly as much love as painting or writing does. But if we apply the same concepts of naivete and a lack of formal training interesting things start to happen. This is the key point here. For it to be outside of mathematics, by this definition, the mathematician has to be both without the tools, that is, you know, how to write proofs, and without the goals. Like, man, I really want to know, you know, a formula for the slope of this curve at any point. So, and, so these methods, so we're not talking about things like, uh, there's been a lot of really great amateur mathematics work done, like, uh, Marjorie Rice and her and her tessellating pentagons. But I would consider that outsider tools, like Marjorie had to make her own tools for, to solve an insider problem, something that you know, established mathematicians were really interested in. Uh, we're looking for outside outside. So let me present to you a pretty outsider problem involving game boards, like chess boards. Here's the question as it originally came to me. How many combinations of board layout and piece movement rules result in a situation where every board space and every move between board spaces are equivalent. The board can look like anything. Any number of spaces arranged in any which way, and the piece can have any arbitrary rules for how it's allowed to move. The condition we're looking for is that no matter where your piece is on the board, that space is indistinguishable from every other space. And every move you can make from that space is identical to every other move. Make sense? This seems to me like a pretty compelling problem, so I started working on it. And I'm going to warn everyone right now, I wanted to attempt this fully as an outsider, so I have my own names for every concept and every technique that I use that I came up with. And they're Frankenstein-style style, Frankenstein style cobbled together from the math that I do know. So games that have all of their board spaces equivalent, I call isospace. Games that have the moves equivalent, not yet, I call isomove. Keep the wincing internal, please. It's all downhill from here. So getting into it, any game that has only one space, one place on the board you can be, now is when I need to change the slide. There we go. Whoops, too far. There we go. Any game that has only one space, one place on the board you can be, vacuously satisfies the condition. You know, the, all the spaces are identical. There's no moves. Uh, any game in which all the pieces are interconnected, so you can get from anywhere to anywhere else, 
that also has to be following our rule. And then, you know, going further into it, anything shaped like a ring in which you can move around the ring, but using some symmetries, you can prove that all the spaces are identical and all the, you know, all the moves from space to space are identical. And there's many more interesting cases what I, that, I, that I found that we can't get into. Right now, I'm sure some of you are screaming internally at me right now, because what I'm doing with this problem is slowly and partially incorrectly, in, in, in incorrectly reinventing graph theory. But that's the point of outsider mathematics. I didn't know any graph theory. If I just taken a class or picked up a textbook, I would have been able to solve the problem exactly the way I imagined some of you are mentally screaming at me, why don't you use this theorem? It's, so, it's the exact case you're thinking about. But that defeats the potential of outsider mathematics. Worst case, my thinking will eventually follow the footsteps of established graph theorists, and I'll eventually rederive something interesting. In the best case, I'll ask the questions no one else thought was important, and then I can work with the established mathematicians to build something beautiful to make sure my little bottle lily doesn't come crashing down. <sighs> One final note. Outsider mathematics is a conscious effort. <laughs> Using ignorance is something you've got to work at. I found it very challenging to leap into graph theory with no concept of what was important, <laughs> what tools I had, or even what I was doing there. There was a lot of pain when I realized that isomove did not imply isospace, something I've been taking for granted since the beginning. But I think the strange terminology and semi-theorems I've come up with in my isolated little graph theory tide pool with no knowledge of our established techniques or mathematical desires is not only valuable, but the only real way I can really see to get us out of the, to, to think outside of the mathematical box. I encourage all of you, the next time you think of an interesting problem and realize it requires knowledge of some branch of mathematics you don't know yet, don't read about it. Try an outsider approach, make up names for the qualities you think are important, and make those mistakes and then be amazed at how close or how far you get from the textbook. Thanks.